Hey guys, how are you? Welcome into a Thursday morning edition of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralta. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. You can follow Betting Pros on Twitter at Betting Pros NFL. We're here on YouTube every morning, wherever you get your audio podcasts. And as always, if you can't find it there, just go to bettingpros.com and you will see the Daily Juice at the bottom. Every single morning, we are here making picks and plays. So I didn't have anything in action yesterday. It was a nice little breather. Some of you got mad. You're the daily juice. You're supposed to be making picks every day. I did make bets for UFC 266. I just didn't make any bets for Wednesday. It was a nice little day off. Why? Because I would have gotten stuff wrong. (laughs) I may have bet the Red Sox. That would have gotten right. That would have been right. But, I mean, baseball's funky. The Cardinals, hello, the Cardinals very well might cash that over, I think it's 86, right? Win total for us. How hot, 11 in a row. They were a dog again last night. What are you doing? 11 games in a row, they've been a dog. Six out of the 11 days, they've been a dog. And they've won every time. Cardinals, man, hello, red hot. And they may actually get us there for their over win total, which would be very, very nice. So watching the futures as we come down the stretch here and waiting to cash our Red Sox ticket and all the other fun stuff that we're going to get to do at the end of the baseball season. Okay, so let's talk about Thursday night football. And I've got three plays for you guys coming up here tonight. I've got one full unit bet. And I have got two prop bets that I want to give you guys coming up here tonight for Thursday Night Football. This is a very interesting game because it is Davis Mills. It is the first ever start for a rookie quarterback out of Stanford. But this is an interesting guy because if you followed the draft, you knew that this player in particular for teams like the Patriots, when they were looking at quarterbacks who could come in and play right away, Davis Mills was one of those guys. I mean, the Patriots really thought about it. They they looked at him. There were rumors connecting the Patriots to him uh, because of this very reason. And it's why the Patriots South took Davis Mills because they think he could play right away. They knew they were not going to have Tyrod Taylor. Sorry, they weren't going to have Deshaun Watson. And in case Tyrod Taylor got hurt, this is the guy. Tyrod Taylor got hurt. And unfortunately for him, after last year getting his <laughs> trainer sticking him with a needle and puncturing his lung which cost him the job with the Chargers. Now here, this is this you know bad hamstring injury that could cost him his job with the Texans. But Mills played okay. One touchdown and one pick when he came in relief through over 100 yards. I don't think this kid's horrible. I think this kid can play. And I think this kid's going to make some people nervous if you're going to come out here and lay the eight points with the Carolina Panthers. Now, Carolina has, has won both games. They're 2-0, they beat the Jets, and then they whipped up on the Saints, and now they're on the road here on a short week to Houston where everyone is betting the Panthers, hammering the Panthers. Eight, maybe eight and a half. Boy, that number is climbing. Haven't we seen this story before? Haven't we seen a home dog on Thursday and everybody thinks it's going to be a blowout and it doesn't turn into a blowout? What if Davis Mills can play? Seriously, what if the kid can play? If the kid can play and he's got weapons and he can throw the ball around, what happens? Are you going to just go, I'm comfortable that Sam Darnold, yeah, that Sam Darnold with Joe Brady and with Christian McCaffrey, that they're going to run the score up and they're going to hammer the Texans in primetime in their building? We so sure about that? Man, I don't know. So I went looking around, okay? I go to different websites. There is a great website called footballoutsiders.com. I would recommend anybody going and taking a look at it. Just go and poke around. Different projections, different things you can look at. Through Football Outsiders, you can also go to a website called EDJ Sports. This is a simulation company, okay? They give you the line that they think the line should be. They are projecting this game to be a 21-17 final. That is a four-point win for the Carolina Panthers. That is also an under for where we are here with a total of 43. Okay? So this is interesting. When you start poking around, you start looking at where this team is. 43. You start going, okay, where are we? How are we going to get here? How many points are going to be scored? What is the most likely outcome here? Okay? So the total is down to 42 now, okay? And I guess 42 and a half is the total right now for this game. 
the 38 points being scored, 21-17, would go, would go under the 42.5 points. Okay, So I'm not saying that the public is wrong. I'm not saying the book's number is way off. But this is the, the, the simulation is saying, okay, money line Panthers, but under and the Texans are the play. So this is enough to freak me out. Okay, this is enough to go, man, do I really want to lay eight points on the road? I do not. Do I want to take the Texans, though, at home plus eight to not get blown out? No, I don't. It freaks me out. The whole game freaks me out. So we're going to go do one of my famous same-game teasers, okay? And I'm going to take the Panthers from eight down to two, so I get them below three. There's a three-point win for the Panthers. We cash. And then I'm going to take the total from 42.5 and and pull it down to 36.5 and and take the over. So let's just say that EJ Sports, EDJ Sports, their simulation is completely correct, and it's 21-17. And it's just a simulation, okay? This is just, they use a model. They simulate it over 100,000 times. It's just one little tool that I use from time to time when I'm trying to figure out games and we have some data. You can't use this website early in the year because you don't have any data to go on. So, And a lot of the data they're using for the Texans is with Tyrod Taylor, okay? So you could say, well, Matt, wait a minute. Are they accounting for Davis Mills? Well, maybe they are because he played in the last game. So maybe they can you know, figure that out and use it in their model. They can tweak their model to represent that they've got a rookie quarterback. But they're saying 21-17, okay? They're saying it's a tighter game than what everybody thinks. Road team wins, but road team does not cover the eight points. I get below two on this same game six-point teaser, and I get below 37, which would get us to the 38 number they're projecting and gets below that. So just in case they're right, (laughs) and I do think Carolina scores, I do think Houston scores, I think both teams, I think 43, 44, 45, somewhere in that range is what I think this game's going to wind up being. The simulation's got it at 38. I'm going below the simulation on both sides. I'm going to go minus two and over 36 and a half. One unit at minus 120. Same game teaser is where I'm going for my first play for this game, first unit. The only way I get burned, I think, is if the Texans win the game outright. And that would be wacko if they won this game outright. It would be an unbelievable fall down on your face, Carolina Panthers disgusting performance. Okay, If Carolina blows out the Texans, we're going to hit the over. So I think this bet is safe to go ahead and bet it like this. And I just, I, I don't think that the Texans go in and just eviscerate the Panthers. It would be, I mean, I would be stunned if they even win the game outright. But Panthers to win the game, a hard-fought game, a three-point victory, I think it's very possible. I think it's very, very possible. But I also think it's possible that the Panthers just go in there and McCaffrey goes crazy and scores a million points for him, and it's a blowout. So this is kind of insurance on both. We get the tight game, we get the lower-scoring game, but we also get the blowout and the high-scoring game. So we're covered on both sides. We hit both, both scenarios. We cash on this wager, okay? So one unit. Same game teaser, six-point teaser, Panthers minus two, over 36.5 for the total for us is what I am jumping into, over 36.5, down from 42.5 for a same game teaser, one unit, okay? Now, I do have two prop bets to jump in, and we're going to first go to the prop bet cheat sheet, which you guys can find on bettingpros.com. Have you guys been using this? Last year... And the model has been refined and refined and refined. We used it in the NFL. Then we came in and used it with the NBA. It was extremely profitable during the NBA for us. If you were with us during basketball season, you know what the prop bet cheat sheet off of bettingpros.com did for us. It was awesome. Okay. This is one game. So it's a little bit different because normally it gives you different games and different plays. But if you go and just click on Carolina at Houston... The number one prop is Sam Darnold to go under his yardage. I'm not trusting that, (laughs) okay? I'm just, I'm not trusting that. However, the number two prop bet cheat sheet recommendation is Robbie Anderson over 43 and a half yards uh, receiving at minus 115 at DraftKings. They are projecting 56.82 yards receiving. That's over 13 yards of value. Dan Harris's model, I talked to Dan, matches that. Dan's got 53 for Robbie Anderson. 
So we're way over 43 and a half by 10 or 13 yards here for both models and both projections. Dan Harris's model and the, bet, the betting pros prop bet cheat sheet thinks that Robbie Anderson from Sam Darnold will have more than 43 and a half yards receiving. So far this year, the Houston Texans have allowed six different receivers to have either 40 or more yards receiving against them. I like this a lot. Robbie Anderson, over 43 and a half yards receiving. These are the moments that I'm betting a half a unit, but I wouldn't hate it if you guys bet a full. I'm betting so a quarter unit. I wouldn't mind a half unit bet on this. All right, this is how much I like this. I'm only recommending a quarter, but sometimes the stars align and sometimes everyone's seeing everything properly. And as long as he doesn't get hurt, I think Anderson gets well over this. I think they're going to get the ball out to him. I think there's mismatches in that secondary. I think Robbie Anderson could have a big day up against this secondary for the Houston Texans. Robbie Anderson, quarter unit, over 43 and a half yards receiving at minus 115 at DraftKings. And for the other half a unit, I'm going to go to the number three recommended bet on the prop bet cheat sheet. And we're going Brandon Cooks of the Houston Texans to go over 68 and a half yards receiving. Now, there is a little bit of a discrepancy between what Dan is expecting out of Brandon Cooks and what the prop bet cheat sheet is expecting. Dan projects 73 and a half yards receiving. So Dan is projecting five yards of value there by betting over 68 and a half at DraftKings at minus 115. But the prop bet cheat sheet says 81.1. That's 12.6 yards of value. So Dan sees five. The prop bet cheat sheet sees 12 and a half. I like it still. I don't like it as much as Robbie Anderson, but I do think Brandon Cooks, I know it's Davis Mills, so you have a little bit of a concern there, but I think he'll look to stretch the field. I think he knows he has to find his playmakers and get the ball out to the right people. And for a quarter unit, I don't think 68 and a half is that big of a number to go ahead and get over it. Brandon Cooks going over 68 and a half yards receiving at a quarter unit at minus 115. That is also can be found at DraftKings for two props going here today for a Thursday night. Now, I may have the other half a unit. I may come in in the pro, in uh, in the Discord channel, bettingpros.com slash chat, or underneath me here on YouTube for the link to get in. We're over 8,000 users, by the way, on the Discord channel, so that's cool. We got over that. Now we got to go for 9,000. But the uh, I may have a half a unit baseball play. I may have a couple of more props. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other half a unit. I'll do something with it, though. We'll have something in play. We'll have some something that I'll add for sure coming up. I need to kind of look around and see what we're going to play with, and uh, we'll do something. We'll have another bet on Thursday, either baseball or football, for you guys for a half a unit on the Discord channel for you guys to hop in, bettingpros.com slash chat to get in, or again, the link underneath me here on YouTube to go ahead and hop in with us here for a Daily Juice podcast. Okay, so... Those are the three plays for Thursday night football. Once again, we are teasing the Panthers down to minus two, and we are taking the over or the total down to 36 and a half, and we're betting the over. That is a one unit bet at minus 120, and we are going with Robbie Anderson over 43 and a half yards receiving, and Brendan Cooks over 68 and a half yards receiving for two props at a quarter unit each at minus 115 at DraftKings for us here on a. Thursday, as we get rolling into the weekend, Thursday, we'll have some plays for Friday, college football, the uh, cold Brewster. I just want to say one quick thing at the end here. And this really warmed my heart because it shows what the community is. So on Wednesday, I'm really busy and Wednesdays are kind of crazy because I teach a class at UNLV and it's at four o'clock. So I I just I'm running around. I get off the radio at uh, at one. I tape another podcast at 2. I then have to get in my car at 3. I drive to UNLV for the class at 4. I teach from 4 to 5.30. I come home. I eat dinner with my family. uh, And then I get going with preparation and everything else. And then I sit down and I do this podcast. So it's a long day. Wednesdays are are long. And and Mondays too because I teach on Mondays too. So I'm not in the Discord channel as much as I would like to be. But... I was seeing all these pictures of dogs and I was just like, what is, what is going on? Like, this is, this is kind of nuts. And the reason is cold Brewster, his dog had passed away. 
And I, I still don't know all the specifics of it, but Cole Brewster is an admin now for us. He's a member of the Daily Juice Circa Million team. And somebody wrote me a really touching note. And I, I don't know if I'm at liberty to, to, to share it or not, but I'll just read you a, a little bit of it because I thought it was really – I, I thought it was really nice. It kind of shows you where we are as a community and how people are and, and, and the way people are kind of reacting. Uh, this came from a user and said, um, Hey, Matt, I'm sure you're seeing all the dog activity in the chat today after Cold Brewster had to put his dog down. Can I suggest that on Friday, the parlay is a dog theme like we did after you lost your cat? Just looking for something at the games. He recommended some games for a dog parlay. Here's a picture of my pup. Uh, he kind of talked about it. He'd say, my ex fiance broke up our engagement for another guy, took him, and will kettle him instead of letting me have dog sit. Kind of a tough, it's a beautiful looking dog. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a beautiful looking dog. Uh, he said, best regards. Thanks for making this community. And it's from, uh, I, I, I'll leave his name out of this. But yes, the, in, in short answer, the parlay on Friday will be, in de- will be dedicated to Cold Brewster and to his, to his pup. And we will do a dog a dog themed, either underdog or dog mascot themed parlay coming up on Friday tomorrow for the Don't Bet a Parlay parlay. And I think my cat parlay, when Felix passed away and we had to put Felix down, I think that parlay hit. So hopefully we can do the same for Cold Brewster and just want to know we're thinking about you, bud. And man, that just, it, it made me really just feel really good that you guys are taking care of your own i'm not around i can't be around as much as i want to be sometimes and the community is there like that's what i wanted it's what i've always wanted that that, that community it's what i was hoping for that like regardless if i'm there or not you guys you know protect your own take care of business and when someone's down you pick them up and you try to make them feel better and and and, and just and be there for each other virtually so yeah, that was really that was a nice moment. That was really cool. So definitely tomorrow on Friday we would do a dog themed don't bet a parlay parlay for sure in in memory of of Cold Brewster's pup. It's pretty cool stuff. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt each and every morning. It's the Daily Juice podcast right here on BettingPros.com. Always being brought to you by BetMGM.